Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to thank the uh, the um, uh, chairman of the session. Um, our presentation is uh, in the framework of the topic of outpatient therapy, and it's uh, the role of um, contemporary radiation therapy uh, in patients with cancer. So the prostate cancer is ranked two in males. Um, trachea uh, cancer is uh, the first one. And if we look at the chart and the USA register, uh, you see that the data there is different. And um, uh, this prostate cancer ranked two uh, after lung cancer. So prostate uh, cancer treatment he included um, the uh, regular um, procedures and radiation therapy. And nowadays, uh, radiation therapy is uh, viewed as uh, um, similar in f terms of benefits and risks to um, radical prostate ischemia. Uh, so how do you choose the treatment and the techniques of the we use the classification uh, and based on three indications uh, the uh, spread of the disease uh, we d decide on the treatment so uh, depending on the risk group and the uh, period of life, the age, we choose a certain type of treatment. Radiotherapy, um, radical prostate ischemia is uh, indicated to, um, in many cases, but radiation therapy usually is ranked first. So what is radiation therapy? The rise of dose uh, per one uh, gray decreases the risk uh, uh, by 1.8%. Um, the the risk of the relapse, and the recent research showed uh, that it's actually uh, not enough. So the effectiveness of uh, radiation therapy uh, was uh, lower. So now we know that we need to dose escalation depending on the relapse risk and um, the minimum risk uh, should be um, considered with radiation of uh, minimum 74 gray. So in what cases do we use radiation therapy? So definitive radiation therapy uh, the radiation therapy is used uh, after uh, uh, radical prostate ischemia, and uh, in the case of distal lymph nodes. The first randomized uh, long-term study that compared longevity of patient and uh, patients with intermediate risk. So you see the comparison of uh, um, radiation therapy and also prostate ischemia. So and the results were quite equal. So what do we choose in this case? So the first thing we look at is uh, the um, the change, uh, so we see the, you see the um, data on the slide. And uh, the research shows that uh, uh, if we uh, compare classical open uh, prostate ischemia and uh, we don't see any statistically valued uh, differences. 
So, uh, what what are the uh, complications? Um, so, the radiation therapy of um, risk groups and intermediate risk groups. 3D conform radiation therapy and stereotoxic radiotherapy. Uh, distant radiation therapy and intra tissue radiation therapy and also combined um, therapy and so um, I'm showing you the ones that are used in our hospital these are the uh, most uh, relevant recent um, types of radiotherapy brachytherapy um, can be uh, of um, um, is different in terms of uh, power dosage. So for radiation, we use two isotopes. Low power brachytherapy is. Uh, uh, widely uh, known and so what what is uh, the benefit of the um, high power therapy so the uh, period the time of the um, procedure is quite short so there is no post implantation period the gland doesn't change its form there is no during migration no deformation because of ultrasound uh, sensor and uh, there is uh, no limit <laughs> for, um, so there's no limit for to use a um, prostate gland it's also more attractive in terms of um, uh, radi radiology uh, radiology it allows radiation safety for the patient and also has a number of factors so it's uh, more financially effective it can be used not only for prostate cancer but also for esophagus cancer and breast cancer patients often ask about uh, proton radiation therapy and there is research that compared uh, various types of uh, therapy. In the first one, uh, the red is the dose on the prostate and the blue one, the, the radiation on the healthy tissues. Um, the beetle proton one and um, brachytherapy. So in brachytherapy, as you see, uh, the uh, radiation doesn't cover the um, normal healthy tissues so the procedure happens in this type of room uh, with uh, ultrasound facilities and a couple of words about the procedure uh, spinal anesthesia is used uh, then the scanning of um, uh, prostate is uh, rendered then we use um, after the procedure we use this uh, secondary scanning and we see uh, so to reveal the changes and um, after that uh, we um, provide the, the radiation this procedure allows to uh, give 3d radiation and this helps to optimize the uh, treatment In case um, of um, lack of tumor cells, uh, we can use it. Uh, we are quite flexible in usage um, of radiation, so this decreases toxic toxicity. In our hospital, we've conducted a study of 200 patients, and there are two regimen for brachytherapy. Uh, two fractions um, with different uh, gray measures. We estimated the effectivity and um, uh, 
the results were quite good and there are uh, results of div other research in different groups um, by uh, chemical uh, survival is more than 90 percent so what are the complications we don't see complications of the third stage that require surgical intervention most likely they are the first and second um, stage that require um, antibiotic administration we uh, uh, didn't see uh, rectal toxicity uh, as well and uh, then uh, erectile function is uh, preserved in this case. So 80 and 90 percent of uh, patients. In, th in three years, we see that 50 percent of patients preserve the function. Stereotoxic radiation therapy is a different um, procedure and it's very effective. It's non-invasive and uh, it uh, implies short period of treatment. Uh, it takes about eight months uh, and five, nine, uh, s s from the decrease is from eight weeks uh, to five, nine days. So it's uh, economically effective. These are the uh, stereotaxic radiation therapy equipment that is available in our hospital. And these are the types of radiation that are used. Uh, 7.25 gray in five fractions, for example. So the first, uh, the we insert markers in the gland, uh, then uh, we set the uh, balance uh, and uh, radiation toxicity, if we put it on the uh, rectal area, is quite high, so we don't use it anymore, then um, we use Mm, all the regular procedures in this case. So you put the patient on the bed, and um, at the at each stage uh, you provide secondary ultrasound tests. This allows to uh, combine both uh, getting the data and also uh, giving radiation to a certain tissues. Uh, then uh, we correct the uh, radiation amount if needed. So who need this type of therapy? These are the groups that um, uh, are known, uh, have been known historically. So initially we took the patients uh, who have contraindications for spinal uh, therapies, but uh, now we take uh, uh, different patients as the effectiveness of these two methods is uh, quite similar. So these are the results uh, in five years, and these are the complications, the red ones, uh, radiation therapy in a regular um, radiation. So the radiation therapy of, in patients of uh, high risk in these groups, we suspect uh, metastasis, even if we don't see them directly. So uh, we um, we provide radiation through the the uh, um, localizations that uh, were shown on the slide. And um, so the brachytherapy uh, uh, and hormonal deprivation so is given in two, for two or three years. And uh, we see a very good results for patients with uh, high risks. 
so these are not randomized. Unfortunately, we don't have the randomized results yet. So these are the uh, patients with uh, very unfavorable um, indications and risk. Here, uh, you see that uh, r this radiation therapy um, have has benefits over the other uh, types. And distant uh, radiation therapy has um, benefits in this case too. So, a couple of more words. In outpatient treatment, effectiveness both before and after the surgery is assessed according to the state of the patient. Uh, and the rates are quite different in various cases. And sometimes uh, our uh, type of treatment is judged by the same criteria, which causes complications. Thank you very much.